All right. Uh, this video uh, is a response to a question from Adrienne uh, Marquez uh, concerning how I got my job. Okay, and the thing is, is I've had my current job for about two seasons. <coughs> um. Uh, the racing community is is really very small and tight and tight knit, and um, I've been bouncing in and out and around for about 16 years now. Um, I started out as an ARCA racing mechanic. Uh, prior to that, um, I had a lot of experience with uh, trucks. Uh, from the driving maintenance repair side, starting with uh, learning how to drive them when I was in the Air Force uh, back in 1982. Um, once I got out of the service, I got a job driving a truck at home and and went to the local community college and started uh, learning how to. Uh, Work and repair, work on repair, maintain uh, vehicles and machinery. Um, of course, I grew up around old cars, so that kind of helped. Uh, my father was notorious for squeezing as much out of a vehicle as he could before he had to buy another one. Um, and so I learned a lot from him. But eventually, um, you know, come to pass, um, I had a couple of friends die, and my father died, and uh, I realized I had just never pursued any dreams in my life. I was just, you know, just going to work and hammering away and paying bills and trying to satisfy somebody that wasn't satisfying me, and, um... Um, it was was kind of stuck in a rut and getting ready to just do something desperate and uh, I got a phone call from a friend. I, I've been I've been helping him with uh, some ARCA stuff um, as a volunteer and um, eventually he called me from North Carolina and said, uh, "If you move up here, I'll give you a job." And that's all it took. Um, when I moved up here, I only had a Class B in my pocket, okay? And there was no intention that I was going to be a truck driver. I was a mechanic. I, I worked on the race cars. Um, I built the race cars. I fabricated the race cars. I painted the race cars. I did whatever it took to get that race car to the track. And um, here shortly, uh, uh, they kind of made note of the fact that I had a commercial driver's license, but it was only a Class B, and that I needed to upgrade. And I'd already been around enough to know <laughs> that I didn't want to upgrade, and nothing personal. I, I, I wanted to work on the race cars. I wanted to to learn more about the race cars. And uh, uh, from my standpoint, it was kind of unfortunate that I was told if, if I wanted to maintain my job, I needed a Class A. And so I went ahead and upgraded. And, and um, A... Uh, that destroyed any chances of 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 working on race cars. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're a truck driver, nobody wants you to touch a race car. All right. But when everything goes wrong and everything goes bad, and they close the doors and they close the books and there's no money left. The longest I've ever been without work is a month, maybe two months. 
right. Um, yeah, it, it's a volatile environment. Um, and if you're not in the right spot, if you're not working for Hendricks, you're not working for Roush, and you're not working for uh, Gibbs, um, your job is an iffy deal. And you just have to roll with the punches as best I can describe it. And and be and here's the thing, okay? You have to be willing to work. Cause that's what they pay you to do. Okay? It's it's everybody thinks it's glamour. And and the only, as far as I'm concerned, the only difference between me and the Hendricks guys are their brand new paint jobs. Okay, my equipment, I will, I, yeah. I've got equipment that does just as good as theirs does, if not better in certain circumstances. And um, I'm at the racetrack every week. But you got to be willing to work because it is hard work. Even the guys that are doing the Hendrick deals and the Roush deals and the Gibbs deals, those guys sweat. They deal with problems. They you got to be able to put out fires. And um, and I've really gotten away from answering your question. <laughs> I apologize. Uh. What I would recommend you do is what I did, um, is uh, snoop around and, and find you a, uh, a rising star in your local community, somebody who's spanking everybody's ass at the racetrack and whose dad has a lot of money, and, and get in with him and, and, and see if you can ride him up here. That's that's the best I can tell you. Um, there's a couple other ways. Um, there's several besides the individual race teams. Um, NASCAR has their own fleet of trucks, but most of the people that drive those trucks are officials. And the reason they're officials is because they have experience with teams, i.e., they work for a race team before NASCAR hired them. Um, there are a few that have come up through, like, uh, Champion Tire, which is a, uh, a company out of, uh, I think they're in Huntersville, and they've got... Uh, They've got at least 30, maybe 40 trucks that um, they use to move tires, wheels, and pit equipment. And those guys work hard, okay? They work a lot harder than I do, and I work hard. And uh, I watch those guys, and I just can't believe how hard they work. Um, there's, um, several production companies, uh, television production, radio production, um, marketing companies, uh, that you can get in with, um, and they are, in fact, like a back door, and eventually, the whole idea is to get into the community. You're not, you're simply not going to jump into a cup hauler. Okay? It's, if you do, uh, your wife's father is somebody's brother. Okay? Um, just, um, uh, what I would suggest is either if you've got a local kid that is just tearing up the world and getting ready to go ARCA racing or, or go crash, or, uh, Tom Johnson truck racing or, or you know, I mean, you know, and, and it's not just NASCAR, okay? The rest of the series 
need drivers too. You know, you you've got these these uh, indie lights, indies, uh, the uh, the world of you know all these open wheel. You know, there's a lot of people, and the thing is, don't grab it if you want to drive a truck. Don't gravitate to the trucks. You got to gravitate to the people that are working on the car that gets moved by the truck. Okay, that's the thing. Um, and I, uh, I, we had a big sit down when I got hired at uh, where I'm at right now. It, you know, it was a luncheon. There was a uh, several. There were, you know, it, it was a big deal. Not just because I was there, but it was a there was a mergeation uh, thing. And we had to go around the table and introduce ourselves. And I introduced myself and I told everybody at the table, I'm not a freaking race fan. Okay? And I've never really been a race fan. I'm, I was more a fan of the people in the racing community, just, just, and so anyway, what I said was, I'm not a race fan. I'm a fan of the guys around me. I'm, a, I'm, I'm my crew chief's biggest fan. I am my engine man's biggest fan. I am all these guys that nobody knows about. I'm their fan. Okay, and um, you gotta have an attitude like that. You got. To let these guys know that if, and pardon me for being so graphic, but if they need their, if they need somebody to hold the paper towel while they blow their nose, you got to be what ready and willing to do it. And it's not because you're kissing your ass, kissing their ass. It's because you're trying to help them get this freaking car out on the track. Um. And I'm still so far away from your question. But it's it's not a simple answer. I've um, that video that, that you're looking at particularly, that was three years ago. And I've had two different jobs since then. Uh, one I got hired away from the Lily trucking deal. Uh, somebody was aware of my reputation and uh, wanted me somewhere else and offered me more money and guess what happens and then uh, and then the next deal where I moved to was great and then the money evaporated alright and the money evaporated okay and when that happens on somebody's desk Heads roll, and fortunately for me, I've been doing it long enough that I didn't get excited. Um, I looked at it as a vacation. I said, "Okay, I'm going to take a couple of days off. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go out in the shed and clean some shit up. I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to get some stuff I've been putting off done. I'm not getting excited, and." Two days later, no, one, no, two days later, somebody at the racetrack looked around and realized I wasn't there and called me. And I've been here ever since. So, um, yeah, Adrian, um, your best bet is to look around and see if there's somebody you can help at home. Okay? And 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 help. Okay? You don't have you don't have to be a mechanic. You don't have to, just help. Okay? There and 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 primarily that is what a truck driver's job in Sprint Cup, Xfinity, Tom Johnson, 
that that's your job. You're there to help. Okay. Yes, you drive the truck, but once you're there, you gotta help. Okay. You're not gonna get on a helicopter and go fly jet ski somewhere. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna sweat and you're gonna get dirty just like everybody else. Okay. And if you can't deal with that, I'm sorry. All right. Um. I hope I helped, and thank you for subscribing, and yes, I've had a beer. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.